In this video, we will do three entry-level or basic symbolizations in single-place predicate logic. The first question here says, fuzzy and cute dogs make good pets and helps you relax. So the trick to sort of doing this is always to try and break things down into the group and the property, and also to sort of try and identify uh, what the uh, main quantifier is going to be, whether or not it's an existential or universal. So for here, when I say fuzzy and cute dogs make good pets and helps you relax, um, what is the sort of main thing, the subject that we're talking about versus what is the property that we're trying to bestow? So here, the main uh, group or the main subject is fuzzy and cute dogs. And then the property is that they make good pets and help you relax. Now, what we have to do whenever we look at the group is ask whether or not it's all fuzzy and cute dogs or some fuzzy and cute dogs. And so here, you just sort of have to read in context of the sentence, and it seems pretty clear that this must be a universal. So this is all fuzzy and cute dogs. Uh, okay, so we're ready to start. Uh, what makes this a reasonably straightforward derivation is that this is just going to have the canonical form of a conditional, where we have the group in here, and the property in here. And we just need to make sure that we get the group correct. So here, what is the thing that we're talking about? Dogs that are fuzzy and are cute. So we just have to make sure we include all these three things in any order we want. And the easiest way is to just use a conjunction in between them. And that isolates the uh, group very nicely that the, we want. So now x isn't just anything. It's anything that is fuzzy and cute and a dog fuzzy and cute dogs. And the property is, if you're one of these things, then you are a good pet, and they help you relax. So nothing tricky about this one. Uh, I do want to talk about this a little bit. Obviously, these can be in any order, but you can also do it in a variant form here, which is you can actually say, if you're fuzzy, then if you're cute, then if you're a dog, then you have the property gx and fx. And that's totally fine. Now you just have to make sure you close all the brackets. Did I get them? I think so. And these are perfectly equivalent. And of course, these could be in any order. And you could even give a combination of these things. You could have said, if you're fuzzy and cute, then if you're a dog, then you have the final property. So there's lots of variants on a multi-place, sorry, single-place uh, predicate symbolization. And uh, you just need to, need to be familiar with why this makes sense. Because here, this is still all the group, oops, wrong color. This is still all the group over here. Uh, the difference, though, is we can say it in terms of conjunctions, or we can say it in terms of nested conditionals, and we still get to the same place. And then at the end, the final conditional, uh, the final consequent, is ultimately the property that we're talking about. So this is a canonical form of a universal with some variance. Let's take a look at another question. There is a fancy cafe that Joe likes to go to when it, the cafe, is not busy. Again, we just need to isolate the subject or the group and then figure out what the property. So what is the main thing we're talking about? Well, it appears that we're talking about a fancy cafe. And the property is Joe likes to go to it when it is not busy. So. Uh, a lot of other stuff here sort of just helps you sort of identify what's going on. Because it says there is a fancy cafe, we're not doing a universal, this is an existential. So I can just start with the canonical form of an existential. So I'll write down the existential, and then I know to open a big bracket, and the main connective is a conjunction. And I will put the group here and the property here. No problem. So the group is a fancy cafe, fancy cafe. You can do it in any order. This time I'll reverse it. I'll say your cafe and your fancy. And the property is Joe likes to go to it uh, when the cafe is not busy. So Joe likes to go to that, which is, of course, X to make it the fancy cafe. And I have to say when it's not busy. So if it's not busy, uh, then Joe likes to go to it. So this is an example where the property itself can be a connective. So here the property is conditional. And just so I don't mess up with the main connective, because I need to preserve this as the main connective, I'm going to put this property in a bracket or parentheses. So I say, if the cafe is not busy, then Joe likes to go to it. 
And so this is the property. The only trick here is that you must have these brackets. Otherwise, it would be the conditional that's the main connective. Now, you could ask about what about brackets at the front? Could I have started off by saying bracket BX and AX and then and? Yes, that's totally fine. Uh, in fact, uh, you could have cut it up other ways. It doesn't really matter. So as long as you have a conjunction as the main connective to pair with the existential to make the canonical form, you're good to go. Here's the last example. If someone stupid jumps off a bridge, then everyone jumps off a bridge unless there's at least one non-stupid person. So we just need to be a bit careful here because what we're doing is we're changing the subject uh, quite a bit. And so whenever you change the subject or introduce a new subject, you need a new quantifier. And you typically want to close off all the parentheses of the previous quantifier when you no longer refer to those things. So I can see here I have someone stupid and then that property is jumps off a bridge. But I also have this, oops, let's change that color. I also have this if that's paired with this then. And so we're going to have a different subject over here because it says everyone, whereas this is someone stupid. So I can actually just ignore what's after the comma and symbolize this simple uh, sentence here. Someone stupid jumps off a bridge. So that is an existential. I'm not talking about all stupid people jumping off a bridge. I'm saying something is a person and is stupid. Uh, and they have the property, they jump off the bridge. Okay, now I have the conditional. And this conditional, just for reference, that's the green that we marked in the question. So now I want to do the rest, which is everyone jumps off a bridge unless there is at least one non-stupid person. Now the easiest way to do this is just to read the unless as being part of this. We'll look at other examples where unless can sort of cause some hiccups, but it's not that bad. So I know that there's two clauses here. Left, the left unless is everyone jumps off a bridge, and the right part of the unless is there's at least one non-stupid person. So everyone jumps off a bridge, that's a, a canonical form of the universal. So everyone is just people. So I would say, I'll actually start down here just so I have more space. I'll say then everyone. Now here you could use X because X is available, because notice I closed the scope here. Uh, but I'll just switch to Y. It doesn't really matter. Then every, everyone, so anything that is a person, jumps off a bridge, has the property that they jump off a bridge. And now I can say, unless there's at least one non-stupid person. Now, at least one is just an existential, okay? So when you see this, that's just an existential. So I know this just says, there is at least one non-stupid person, is uh, there is, uh, I'll change it to Z, something that is a person and non, not stupid. And how do I make this unless? Well, unless is easiest symbolized with a disjunction. And this entire thing is the consequent. If you want, you could put brackets around this thing. It doesn't really matter. So notice that I introduced a quantifier each time using uh, whenever I had a new subject or group. And of course, I just use the canonical form over and over again of what I displayed earlier in this video. The most important thing to take away from this is how did I know when to close the bracket? So notice I closed this and I closed this. You know to close it when you no longer are talking about that thing. That's really the easiest thing to think. So here I'm talking about the someone stupid, but notice I don't talk about that thing anymore as I go through the sentence. And so the second you realize that, you close the scope and then you continue. So some people will ask, can I just leave the scope open? So what happens if I actually erase this bracket and put it at the end? Actually, that would make your answer incorrect. And another another sort of problem with this is some people might just be tempted to write all their quantifiers at the front and then try and symbolize. I strongly suggest that you don't do this. Uh, there are some more sort of advanced videos that I have in symbolization which explain why this won't work. But in general, this is not a good thing to do, and you're probably going to come up with the wrong answer if you do it this way. So try and symbolize it like we use natural language, introduce quantifiers each time we have a subject, and close the scope of that quantifier each time we are no longer talking about the subject, and you won't have any problems.